Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. I'm Anas Ria, data scientist with three years of experience based in the UK, worked for dozens of different clients as a consultant, and today's topic we're going to talk about what is coming in 2025 in data science. First, lots of automation. Data science will become automated. The data cleaning, data wrangling, transformation, analysis, a lot of things will become automated because there are powerful tools nowadays that will help you speed up the process. It's just what it is. Using ChatGPT nowadays speeds up your process and this is a form of automation. Even though you take a data set and you go analyze it in ChatGPT, then bring back the results. But nowadays, if you know how to build a solution, you can automate the process so that you can get the results faster and more accurately. So automation will be a huge part of 2025. It has been the case this year, but it will keep growing. Number two is data scientists will have to adapt or die. Adapt in the sense that you'll have to improve the things that you lack. If you lack soft skills, you cannot communicate your findings. You cannot speak to stakeholders. You will struggle because your technical work can be replaced and can be automated nowadays. It doesn't mean your work is irrelevant, but a lot of it will become automated. So those things that are not, meaning speaking to stakeholders, sharing with them your findings, helping businesses grow their revenue, making more informed decisions, this is what people will pay for. So you have to upskill, you either adapt or die. Next is no code, low code will take over. It has already been the case with software development. There are many tools now that where you can build websites, uh, web apps, mobile apps directly with no code or very little code. It will become the same for data scientists. If you've noticed already, big cloud providers such as AWS already offer these things. So if you go into AWS, you'll find AutoML, for example, that helps you simplify, automate the cleaning process, analysis, even reporting. So these things will keep and keep growing. And a lot of big companies will compete into making data accessible for the average person that doesn't have a deep understanding of how data works. So anyone nowadays will have to become a data analyst by nature. Whatever your work is, if you leverage data, which I'm sure you are, you'll have to become a data analyst of some sort. So a lot of tools will give you analytics, they will give you reporting, and you will have to interpret them. So my prediction is a lot of no-code, low-code tools will take over and will simplify people's lives into analyzing, interpreting the data. If you're enjoying the video so far, remember give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It does help the channel grow immensely. We recently reached 1,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for doing it. Next is specialize, then generalize. Become a specialist in whatever you do in your data science field. So for example, if you work in finance, become a specialist data scientist in finance. Your value in that industry will be very high. You'll get a better pay, but over time become a generalist because there are many things that you can learn, improve and become valuable for a variety of industries and not just be a data scientist, but maybe move towards a data strategist that can handle the whole life cycle of a data project. Next, expertise in cloud will become a must. Already, most companies leverage the cloud. The usage of AWS, GCP, Azure, and the big, big cloud providers has been skyrocketing these past few years. From 2019, there was over $200 billion spent in the cloud providers. And nowadays in 2025, it's going to double. You can just imagine how those tools became powerful and they serve not just to go and rent servers or storage or have some virtual networks or virtual machines. You can also do all your data science, machine learning work all in one place. So getting to know and work in the cloud and doing your data projects in the cloud, let's say in AWS or Azure, will become a must because some of their tools are so powerful that you need to learn how to use them. Next is soft skills will become very, very, very important. They are already today and the big data scientists with the bigger paychecks, they do have the best soft skills that you could see. They are the best communicators, they know how to speak to different stakeholders, they know how to present their findings, and they know how to think ahead in a project. And they know that they need to start with the end in mind. They look for the results and then they bridge the gap. And that gap is the tools that you use, the scripts that you write, and all the technical stuff that is between. 
So having that vision, having those soft skills will become very, very important. So if you like any one of them, like communicating or struggling to report to stakeholders effectively, that's an aspect that you need to work on. Not just upskilling SQL or Python or R, these are very important, but when you upskill, don't just focus on technical skills, focus also on the soft skills, and those are the ones that will make you become super valuable over time. So here it is, my predictions for 2025 for data scientists. You'll have to adapt. A lot of things will become automated. You will either need to specialize first, then generalize, or if you're already generalizing, try to still go deeper into one industry to become super valuable in it. Become an expert at using the cloud for your data science project and always invest in soft skills. Remember all these, some of them might make sense, but many of us will just end up skipping them and just moving on with technical learning things that are very technical. But don't forget with the rise of AI, a lot of things will become automated and will become easy to use for anyone even without technical knowledge. So be careful about that, invest in all of these things, and I'm sure you're going to succeed. A lot of my subscribers always tell me how to study and learn new things while having a full-time job as data scientists. And I made a specific video that I will link just here or in the description below that I show you the process of how I study even with a full-time job where I show you how to make time for everything even with a full-time job. 